The Nintendo Switch Joy-Con charging dock is the first licensed dock that is there to charge your Joy-Cons, and it does a pretty good job, but is it really worth $30? Let's, let's take a look. So first things first, when you open the box, there's really not a lot to it. it. It pretty much comes right open, and you have the dock just sitting there in plastic with plastic shield and some paperwork. And that's pretty much it. You take it out, on the bottom you'll see it has the cable that is bundled to it. Now, that cable does not remove from the unit, it has to stay attached at all times, which is kind of a, a, a little bit of a grievance of mine, which I'll get to at towards the end of the video. But overall, it's there. Now, when I first took it out of the package, I was a little surprised because it has some weight to it. It's not a light, cheap feeling piece of plastic. And I realized this after opening that it actually has like weights inside to help hold the top part so it's not knocked over easily. So that was a nice touch overall because they could have left that hollow and then you probably would have been knocking this thing out all over the place. Now, like I said, I did open it up and the reason I opened it, one, I wanted to see what was going on in there, which by the way, it's uh, it's not the best build inside. Now it works, it's fine, but there are some things missing that I would have liked. Um, again, I'll get to that later on, but when I opened it up, that's when I discovered the weights and I realized a lot of it is kind of glued together. I mean, they do have the ribbon cables and they use glue to kind of keep them from kind of, I guess, dislodging. But overall, it felt cheap seeing like hot glue inside this uh, device because these are Nintendo licensed products. These aren't just made by Powerade and put out without Nintendo's approval. These have the, the Nintendo seal of approval right on the front. So I do expect good build quality overall because Nintendo generally puts their stuff together pretty well. When I see something like the Pro Controller and then I see something like this charging dock, it, it definitely doesn't line up. Now I had some extra paint left over, so I did manage to take it completely apart and I went ahead and painted the base unit purple, leaving the black sleds here, uh, just black because they're metallic. But any of these accessories that are coming out, I don't know if it's the, the plastic they're using, but man, paint sticks and kind of, uh, grabs to it really well. So I went ahead and put some coats of purple on there, put a uh, little extra clear coat for protection over it. I double checked the LED uh, rubber parts on the top and I just kind of used a toothpick to scratch off any paint that got on it. And it came out pretty nice. I mean, overall, I'm a, I'm a little surprised how well it came out, but it came out nice and it, it kind of sits up well with my dock that is also purple now. So let's talk about this dock a little bit. There's a few things that I really wish uh, they had a few decisions I wish they had made here. One, I wish this cable was able to be kind of removed because there are a lot of people's pets who do not respect these kind of cables and will chew them up and there is no way to replace that cable. What they should have done was gone with a USB to USB or a USB-C on one end like here and then run that to the USB because this does run through USB 2.0. It's not even using 3.0 because all it needs is power. So they want you to really plug this into the dock on the switch so you have something else coming off of it which not a big deal because you have USB ports. You have two USB 2s and a USB 3. This works fine on the USB 2 because more than likely you'll just leave it plugged in forever pretty much at all times and then you just pop your Joy-Cons on when you're done. And this would work great for something like ARMS because it is able to charge four at once. And of course with ARMS, you might get into using more of the motion controls. And if you have two people playing at the same time, you're gonna use four Joy-Cons and this charges four of them. So it actually works out pretty nicely. So when you do slide a Joy-Con in, the indicator light on the top turns red, just letting you know it's charging it. And then when it detects that it is fully charged, it will turn green. And that's fine, it's it's pretty straightforward. There's nothing fancy going on here. You don't have like uh, battery meters, something else I wish they had put on there that kind of uh, either fills up on the side or maybe the light changes color from like red to orange to yellow to green, just to let you know how close it is to being charged. Uh, but really, I guess for the money, this is as good as they were gonna get it. But the one thing I don't like outside of the cable is that there's no locking mechanism on here for these Joy-Cons to latch into. I would have much preferred that they sit down and they click and it kind of grabs the Joy-Con rather than just letting you kind of just slide them in and out freely. Um, I just It's just something I, I feel like they missed on and they could have done that fairly easily since the Joy-Cons already have that mechanism built in internally. You really just need a spot for that top part to grab. Now I did also go ahead and test it with a wall wart, you know, the standard ones that you use for your cell phones. It works fine there. You technically don't even have to plug it into the switch. Um, they just gave you this USB cable to plug into, which is something else they could have included with this, this, this device at $30. They should have given you a wall wart because let's face it, these wall plugs, they're cheap. They're not expensive. You can go to like five below in places and buy them. If you want a more powerful one, you can obviously spend some more money, but if you're, if this is just running through USB 2, it's not pulling much power. It's usually pulling like 500 milliamps or something through USB 2. That's why stuff like iPads and things like that sometimes 
won't even charge through USB 2 because it just didn't put out much power. So I would have definitely gone with a locking mechanism, include some kind of wall wart, and make this stupid cable not be completely attached to this device. I feel like that is a big miss right there, if anything else. Make it so that this cable can just become freely unplugged, and you can kind of plug in a USB-C to USB 2.0 and you're good. That way you don't have to replace the whole thing if this one little cable gets torn up. Now I'm sure this won't be the, the only charge dock we see for the Switch, and I hope they do make those improvements. Um, four, to one, four to one dock for the Joy-Cons, probably enough. I, I'm, I'm sure there'll be ones that come out where you can charge six at a time. USB 3, for example, would allow you to charge several at a time without any issue. Um, and then more than likely, because it's split between all four here, it will charge a little slower than it would even on your Switch, for example. Um, but really, if you're going to be putting in this dock, you're probably gonna be doing that overnight, so it's not a big deal. So final thoughts on this, if you need a charging dock, if you want a place just to put your Joy-Cons when you're done, and you just kind of have some floating around, you know, you don't have a place to really put them, this is definitely a better investment than say that, that charge grip that's $30. This makes more sense overall because then you can charge multiple Joy-Cons uh, at once without really having to have them just kind of floating around. You have a place for them when you're done, you just kind of slide them on here, and then you go on about your day or you go to bed. Um, and it makes sense. I just wish that there were some other things that could have added to this. And really, that's something we'll probably see down the line. Is it worth $30? Depends. If you want a charge uh, dock, yes, it is probably worth $30. Yes, guys, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this look at the Power A Joy-Con charging dock. It's good if you need a dock, um, but if you don't need one right now, maybe you only have a, a set of Joy-Cons, it's worth passing on until a better one shows up on the marketplace. But if you need one, they're available on Amazon for $29.99. You can also go to most Walmarts, Targets, Best Buys, and find them generally in stock without too much issue. That's it for today, guys. I will see you next time.